Hello, my name is Doug Davison. I'm the president of SmiteWorks, the creators of the Fantasy Grounds Unity Virtual Tabletop. Today I'll be showing an early prototype for a first-person theater of the mind interface for Fantasy Grounds Unity. The final version of this will fully integrate with FGU and the existing map features. This will allow us to do some very clever things with map surfaces, establish relative distances from one object to another, link in with the combat tracker, but to provide a different look and feel that should be easy to use in a mapless theater of the mind system or with a map. To clarify, when I say that we'll be using our map features when you don't have a map, I simply mean that we want this to work with almost no prep or pre-setup. We're targeting existing theater of the mind uses that we see commonly employed on YouTube and Twitch streams. It could encompass RPG interaction between players and NPCs, it could handle quick one-room combats or outdoor encounters where you don't already have a tactical map. It could provide an alternative experience to tactical maps when you do have those available. Initially, we are focusing on simple floors and combatants in a space relative to one another, possibly with some basic terrain. We don't want to add in extra complexity of walls, doors, windows, etc., or even fully 3D objects. We may be able to move into that more as we continue to explore this space. So enough talking on to the demonstration. As you can see, I have a few trees and three NPCs visible. You may recognize these as NPCs from the recent Monsters of the Multiverse module. And you may be wondering why uh, I've basically been uh, switching all of our NPC images over to use transparent backgrounds and at a larger image size. And this basically allows us to build board them. Thanks to Carl for the name uh, for that, basically. So that they always face the camera when I move about the environment. What I mean by that is that as I move here, and then if I move the player camera around, then basically they continue to face. And what this does is it basically gives us a simulated 3D environment using only 2D assets. So uh, basically these 2D assets are ones that were provided to us from Wizards of the Coast uh, and you know the same sort of assets that are provided by all of our publishers because publishers produce 2D books. So this is a key component of our strategy we simply can't afford to create 3D assets for every upcoming module, but we will be able to present images in this format pretty much at launch and at no additional cost uh, for development whenever a new module or an adventure or book comes out from anybody. Um, so um, this basically makes it easy for you or for like Forge crafters to create and sell their own assets as well that will work in this interface. So I could see like, you know, creating assets with more like trees and that sort of stuff. Um, that we could then use and employ within the map. So um, these images, one of the nice things about these is that we know that these are medium-sized creatures. We know how, how tall that we should basically draw them. Uh, we also notice that there's a range that's visible here. So as, as that creature moves in or out, you'll see that the range uh, you know, adjusts and people can get you know, pretty much right up on you at this point and you know that they're in your in your melee range basically so if you're in melee with someone you'll see this here every individual player character will have their own separate view and their own player characters will have representations that they can use of their characters as well within this space uh, so behind the scenes we will be using our existing map functionality to to track the relative locations of, of things one another and it'll also allow us to do some some clever things with you know the backgrounds and so forth so here i can switch out the backgrounds this is just in the prototype but uh, this will ultimately be driven by you know what is on the the actual map image on the floor and so again this is another sort of an asset that we think people will be able to utilize and create their own uh, basically by just throwing things into their asset window linking in with the maps um, and then you can kind of set up everything here so when i mentioned about different sizes so one thing that's really nice here is that i can bring in say a troll if i bring the troll in you notice that the troll when he's at the same distance as say this person here they're relatively the same distance to each other, but I can draw the troll to be larger. I can make the, the troll 20 foot tall basically as opposed to, or sorry, 10 foot tall as opposed to, you know, five to six foot tall for this thing. So as it gets right up in your face, it becomes an easy way to demonstrate the scale to your players. And I think that'll be a fun environment for people to really play with uh, and experience, especially people that are new to D&D, &D, you know, to, to see a troll on a top-down tactical map uh, is a little bit impressive because it takes up a two by two space, but to see it where it's this much larger to me that really drives home uh, how small you are as a person basically compared to everybody else. Um, you know some of the creatures you'd be fighting, and here you can go even larger, and I can throw 
the old frog hemoth in the background. And you'll see here, um, yeah, he can, you know, you can hide him behind the trees and then bring him out for like a grand reveal, that sort of stuff. Really kind of cool features that you can do here. The other thing you'll notice is I basically, uh, I inadvertently right clicked on something. So you can do right click targeting to target multiple things. Um, we'll probably play around with which interface we want to do for that, but we want it to be easy to, to click and select the thing that you want to interact with. If you can see it and there's nothing blocking, you should be able to just click, hey, I can, I can see this thing. We can potentially also use our existing map features to do some things such as vision range and everything else uh, because of our API that we've been, you know, evolving over the years allows us to do some really clever things there as well. Um, but then you can do things like say I can target this guy here uh, and I can damage him. So if I'm dealing damage, then you notice that I'm just basically doing a little shake interaction there, which we, you know, we'll play around with that and get something that, that looks really good. Also, I can color code the kind of damage that's being dropped on them. Just make it more visual so that when you drag and drop combat damage on someone from your attacks, uh, that you kind of see that. Uh, similarly, I think if I have, uh, I have to check and see, damage, target. Um, I think I have another button. I forgot what it was. But there's a way that you can have damage flow across the screen um, for your own self. Uh, what button did I link that to? Control. I don't remember. <laughs> but basically, um, there's another way where you can have damage and effects show up here. And we can also potentially you know, display things that are relevant for the player in this area down below. Uh, oh, here it is, damage player. So yeah, so for instance, the whole screen can shake when you take damage. Just allows us to re really do some kind of cool, clever things. Um, this is the prototype, what it will finally look like once we get it fully integrated. will definitely change. And uh, you know, Carl's starting to work on that right now. Uh, along with some other kind of pressing issues that are necessary for performance and for the future maintainability. But I did want to showcase just kind of in general some of the things that we're working on to let you guys know that we are not planning on going away or being, uh, you know, uh, not relevant, <laughs> I guess, in the future of everything else that's going on in the world. And hopefully this is a vision that I think some people will like and some people will want to utilize. Um, some things we can do too, we can change time of day. Um, you notice that we do have some shadows and some stuff like that that we're able to draw just based off of the images that are there already. Uh, I think that's basically it. So, um, oh, one more thing. Yeah, so basically because we're using our maps right now uh, to drive this behind the scenes, this allows a DM, while we want to make it super easy for when you don't have a map, you can just very quickly throw things onto a map and say, oh, I'm being ambushed by goblins or whatever. Uh, you can prepare those in advance, and here I've got like an example of what a goblin encounter might look like. So here I've got some goblins that were hiding behind a tree. You notice that they, you know, they're basically not seen. They can position them relative to things, and they can pop out. And then the player can basically, you know, say, "Oh, I want to go around the outside and see." And they basically come around. And they say, "Oh, there's some goblins hiding behind those trees." And you notice that we basically um, there there are a little bit of things here where because of the way the trees kind of constantly move and shift over. Um, I could do like my example of again the the giant frog hemoth in the background. You could see you know basically what is that over there? I can't really tell and then you can move around to the outside and see um, from there. So players will be able to move relative um, and then do like you know look around and all that all that kind of stuff um, and they'll just be basically behind the scenes moving around on that little 2D map. Um, but yeah I think this gives us a lot of opportunities to do some really kind of cool and clever things. I hope you'll be uh, excited to see this come out and you know share your thoughts, let us know what sort of stuff you would like to see. We'll probably share more as we get a little bit farther into the actual integration of it and, uh, and how that will ultimately look. Um, and you know, I can see a lot of great things with our existing you know uh, filter effects. Hopefully we can utilize those and have it be raining if we wanted to or foggy or you know whatever. Um, so maybe some things that we can do with various skyboxes in the background um, and then we'll just be working on coming up with some cool images and stuff that we can use that, you know, going back through some of our old catalog and providing, you know, these images in this format so that you can use them pretty much right out of the gate uh, with a lot of great assets. And so we'll be working with our partners to help prepare for this, too. Uh, I know that, like, when we did Fallout recently, we did uh, make sure the graphics would be working for this. And so we're kind of taking that approach to prepare for, you know, having everything be ready to run. Uh, and you can utilize it pretty much right away. So thanks for watching, and you know, let us know in the comments if you have any more questions, and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. Thank you.